Ghost. You may not be speaking with tongues, but if Jesus is in your life, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. So since I got Jesus, I know I will not perish. And since I know I will not perish, I don't have anything to be sad about. I got joy, and the Lord gave me joy because joy is my bucket. Joy is my rope that enables me to go down into the well and draw water of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, with joy, look at somebody and say, with joy, shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Look at somebody and tell them if you don't have joy, you don't have nothing to draw water with. Woo! If you don't have joy, you don't have strength. Woo! Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Let the church say yes. In Memphis, Tennessee, and from auditoriums across America, we present the Bountiful Blessings broadcast with Bishop G.E. Patterson. Our mission is to reach the universe of mankind with the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, admonishing them to receive the gift of his spirit, to lift and nurture the total man as we expectantly await the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I command you to be healed, be delivered, be set free. From the beautiful city of Memphis, Tennessee, I'm Evangelist Louise Patterson with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This ministry loves you. We pray for you and we thank God for your support. Some of you are new Christians. I want you to know you've not made a mistake. It pays to serve Jesus. Anything that you get into, read the word of God. He'll show you a way out. Now, I tell you, you're going to be in for a word of God that's going to empower you like never before. We're going to tell you how important the joy of the Lord is in your life. Now you be blessed in the name of Jesus from the ministry of Bountiful Blessings Incorporated. Acts chapter 8 beginning with verse 5. And I want to read this rather swiftly from verses 5 through 17. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, 
he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Now listen, these are the words that I want you to observe today. Verse 1, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Can I hear you say Christ? Then I want you to look with me to uh, verse 8. And there was great joy in that city. Can I hear somebody say joy? joy. And at the end of verse 17, then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Can I hear somebody say Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost. Now. What are we talking about? Christ, joy, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> That's where I am today. I want to talk to you about Christ, joy, and the Holy Ghost. Now, in this day and time, I believe that it is essential that we recommit ourselves to Jesus Christ. We need to recommit to preaching about him, to teaching about him, to demonstrating his life in the workplace and in the schoolroom and in the home and everywhere else, and to not be ashamed to testify about Jesus Christ. It is a day when there is such a rise in interest of the other so-called world religions. And it is so sad that in a nation like the United States of North America where uh, we used to boast pretty much of being a Christian nation, uh, everybody did not embrace uh, the Pentecostal doctrines, but almost everywhere you went, from the White House to the shanty out in the country, people were lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. But as the population of this nation and the population of the world continues to explode, we in the Christian community have begun to teach and to focus upon prosperity upon that particular way that we can use the word in order to enrich our lifestyle and while we have gotten caught up in a corner Others are invading the minds of the people of this nation. And people are being swept out of the street into Islam. They're being swept into Scientology. Even now you can watch television and... Uh, uh, here is a particular religion that once upon a time did not open its doors to people of color. But now, because we are prosperous, they open their doors to everybody. And you can be watching television and all of a sudden, here comes a very smooth Madison Avenue produced uh, commercial that introduces you to the Book of Mormon. Another testament of Jesus Christ but if you really get the word of God down in your heart you understand that the Lord said don't you add to this 
It's complete by itself. If you add to it, I'll add to you the plagues that are written therein. And if you take away, I'll take away your part out of the book of life. And here in a nation that was once the one sending missionaries afar. And now if you noticed, many of the great speakers that come to America now, they are coming from other nations evangelizing us. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. While other religions are trying to compete for the minds of the people, the hurting multitudes that are in the street, most of us as pastors are either on television, competing just to sell our tapes, or we have the people that are starting churches and instead of trying to win the center, if you had spiritual eyes even here today, you'd see a bunch of fishing poles and rods and reels in here. People are not trying to get folk out of the street. They're trying to reach in here and get those that are already churched. You know I'm telling you the truth. Practically every one of you in here, somebody's trying to proselyte you. Honey, what you going down there for? They got enough folk there. We, we need your help over here. Come on over here, honey. The Lord is working wonders. And you can sit there for months and never see the wonders. It's a time we need a recommitment to Jesus Christ. Understand now, before Philip went down to the city of Samaria preaching Christ, the city was all messed up. There was a fellow by the name of Simon. Simon the sorcerer. Simon the necromancer. Simon the charmer. Simon the wizard. Hello. Simon the palm reader. Simon the crystal ball gazer. Simon the hoodooer. Simon the psychic. The whole city was under his control. And the Bible said for a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. And it's something how people can be bewitched and think that they're on the right track. But when Philip went down and preached Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, Christ the anointed one, Christ the Messiah of Israel, as he began to preach, the spell was broken. I'm here to tell you that Jesus will break the spell. Yeah, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life, Jesus will break the spell. You can be so addicted chemically. Doesn't care what it is. It doesn't matter whether it's marijuana or whether it's crack or cocaine or some of these new drugs they've come up with. I want you to know you haven't ever seen a high. You haven't ever felt a high until you get high on Jesus. He'll lift you above everything that's going on around you. Stuff can be so messed up around you. Hallelujah. That everywhere you look, it can be like Stephen. Stephen looked when they were stoning him to death. And I heard somebody say the outlook was gloomy. But the outlook was glorious. When he looked up, he saw Jesus. I don't know what's going on in your house. But I want you to know that Jesus can lift you lift you above that one that's trying to do you in lift you Philip preached Christ and when you preach Christ not only are you preaching salvation for the soul but automatically there is a healing 
that goes along with Jesus. Isaiah 53 says, Surely he's borne our grief, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. Yes, he died. He was hung up for our hang-ups, died for our sins, but also with his stripes we are healed. When you preach Jesus, you're preaching Jehovah Rapha. You're preaching the Lord, our physician. And I want you to know it doesn't matter what you have. For years I've been telling you what the Lord said to me. It doesn't matter what it is if you can have it. Woo! Doctors may not be able to get that thing together. But if you can have it, the God that I serve through Jesus Christ, he can heal it. I wish you'd tell somebody, whatever it is, if you can have it, he can heal it. Anybody in here that's been healed, you ought to leap to your feet and shout hallelujah. Thank you. Glory. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. Oh, I know. Sometimes, you know, we get excited. But when the doctors come, and we, we've got a number of doctors here. Uh, these doctors that are sitting around here, they don't come here for me to try to tell them what I know about medicine. All I know about medicine is enough for them to know how dumb I am. We got a number of attorneys. I don't get up here being foolish trying to teach them law. Sometimes folk go to church and they get everything but what they go after. I don't think anybody come in here to hear me and give them a lesson in computer technology. I don't know anything about it, but I do know a man. <laughs> the man I'm talking about is a man that can heal your soul and your body. Mm. Anybody in here know him? If you know him, I just wish you'd shout his name. Glory. The, the city was under the spell, the bewitching spell of Simon the sorcerer. But Philip walked into town and just start preaching Christ. And the word of God says what? And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Now, a lot of them probably didn't want to hear it. But while they were listening, they were also seeing, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them. You know, it's something about it that when you start preaching about Jesus and especially his power to cast out demons. Something about demons, they can't be quiet. A few Tuesday nights ago, I was preaching and I was on the subject of demons and we had somebody sitting out there in the audience, they wanted to fight, talking loud. It don't even matter, folk can be halfway intelligent. But that's something about it. When you start stirring the devil's nest, the person that, that's on, <laughs> that he possesses may try to be quiet, but the demon on the inside. See, you, you, you read that first chapter, Mark, the devil has a theme song. 
and his theme song is let me alone when you start talking about the stuff that demons make folk do drug addiction filthy communications out of their mouth and all of a sudden when the word of God starts pounding demons begin to get restless and they open their mouth and start screaming Philip kept preaching Christ until demons start coming out a lot of you folk thinking that I need to, to, to take my chemically dependent person to a psychologist I need to take them here and take them there no you need to do like folk used to do you need to learn how to bring them to Jesus I'll tell you there's not anything that he can't heal there's not any demon that he can't cast out Let, let me settle down here. I'm about to go up in the orbit before I get to the real material here. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them if you don't have joy, you don't have nothing to draw water with. Woo! If you don't have joy, you don't have strength. Yee. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy, unto our Lord neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength you say you're too weak to make it you say I can't go no further you said this is the last straw you said I have to fight every Sunday to make myself get out of the bed to go down to the church I, I, I just go and look like I don't get nothing my God, you're weak because you don't have the strength. The strength is found in the Holy Ghost. But if you're going to praise your way into the Holy Ghost, you've got to have joy. Whatever the enemy is doing in your life. Paul. Paul was confronted by a religious day when Christians were constantly talking about the kingdom of God what is the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God when will the kingdom come will it be set up on earth or will it be somewhere else Paul said let me straighten you out I want you to know Romans 14 and 17 that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink Yee! the kingdom of God is not something tangible that you can put your hand on but it's righteousness it's peace it's joy in the Holy Ghost you need you need the Holy Ghost how do I get it I get it with joy I run down the aisle opening my mouth giving God some praise everybody else may be sitting down with their legs crossed but something on the inside is working on the outside ah! Jesus I love you Jesus I'm going to close. Peter and John, they heard that Samaria had received the word. They heard that the members of the church had been baptized. They heard that joy 
was flowing throughout the body and they came down and they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost now the book of Acts in other places tell me how they knew that they had received the Holy Ghost in the 8th chapter here it doesn't say anything about speaking with tongues but in chapter 2 when the Holy Ghost fell on Pentecost they began speaking with other tongues in chapter 10 verse 44 while Peter was preaching the Holy Ghost fell on them and those that came with Peter said can we prevent water and hinder these from being baptized they've got the Holy Ghost like we have how do you know it verse 46 said we heard them speaking with tongues Acts chapter 19 Paul passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus found some disciples said have you received the Holy Ghost since you became believers they said we haven't even heard whether that be in the Holy Ghost he said how are you baptized they said under John's baptism and when Paul baptized them again they came up out of the water speaking with other tongues you need you need the Holy Ghost you got to have Turn to somebody and tell them, neighbor, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're living beneath your privilege. If I were you, I wouldn't leave here today without being filled. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Somebody got joy! If the joy wheel is turning, don't nobody need to tell you how to praise him. Just praise him. However your joy dictates. I'm sure that you will agree with me that every tape that you viewed or heard, it is one that helped you tremendously in your life. That's what's so beautiful about God's word and God. He is your helper. The Holy Ghost is your helper helper. That's why we take so much time to select tapes that are going to strengthen your spiritual life. Now you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might in the name of Jesus. It's a rare love story of two precious pearls that through their life of service to God created a strand of pearls. That strand is seen throughout the pages of this book. Call 1-800-544-3571. That's 1-800-544-3571 to find out how you can get your copy of this book today. Or you can go to our website. That's beblessed.org.